What happens when two spin one-half particles decide to dance? Quantum spin operators sound complex, but they unlock insights into the universe's tiniest particles. Today, we explore how particles combine spins to form intriguing new states and witness the surprising results of these interactions. From the mysterious rules of spin coupling to the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients, we'll cover it all. How you might ask? Well, in today's question, which is a three-parter, we look and investigate these spin operators. In part A, we want to apply the lowering operator to the state 1, 0, defined by equation 4.175, and confirm that we get square root of 2, h-bar, with the next lowest state. And then in part B, we want to apply the raising and lowering to the state 0, 0, defined by this equation, and confirm you get 0. These two will be a big discussion point in many texts, so we'll definitely talk a lot about uh, their construction and why they're important to further research. And then in part C, show that one, the state 1,1 one, one and the state 1,1 one, one are eigenstates of the uh, operator S squared with the appropriate eigenvalue. As you see, these are constructed and we'll need to verify with the eigen equations of the appropriate operators. So by the end of this video, you will know how to approach these notationally dense problems involving spin. They do get kind of messy. Before we begin though, there is a free companion PDF for you to follow along. Access it using the link below. Moving into stop number one, it's important that we get a grapple on what we are to expect from this problem. This is in the section of the book where we're covering the addition of angular momentum, in particular the addition of spin angular momentum. With that being said, that is why we preface this as two spin 1f particles dancing together because we have a lot to figure out. That being said, we need to look over some things. What we say about this is because we're adding two uh, spins, the addition of spin momentum, we have a operator that acts on state 1 and an operator that acts on state 2. This notation gets messy and cumbersome because we're trying to highlight that this is the state, the conjoined state S and the conjoined state M, which we know is a linear combination of each individual state, and this is how we represent them. Because M equals 0, there are two different ways to get that, via a linear combination of spin up and spin down and spin down and spin up. This is all highlighted in the fact that with this particular spin state, where the total is s equals 1, we have a triplet state. And in this particular base notation, this is what we call the coupled basis. So be aware that this coupled basis is represented by spin up and spin downs with these arrows. And this was highlighted in the beginning of the section, so if you want the chapter notes, feel free to go uh, download that PDF. It's very helpful, but also be aware. This makes the notation really dense because in this uh, arrow notation, we have state one and state two, and that that's what makes it a little difficult to comprehend these things when moving from section to section. So I'll try my best to break that down. There's plenty of authors out there who handle this in several different ways. This way might not be the best, but it is one of the most studied books, so that's why we use it. All right, that being said, we need to distribute uh, this state into each one of these operators. So that's why here for the blue operator, we operate on the first state, the red we operate on the second. So distribute these into this bracket and we see that we get something like this in the distribution. Again, I did this a little more nitpicky in the PDF. That way we don't spend too much time on me ranting in the video. But what we see here is that the spin uh, lowering operator acting on state one needs to be uh, shown to act on both of these. So that's why we distribute here and distribute there with the big plus sign coming from here and color coded accordingly so that we can do this. Now, the next step is just to highlight, and we won't always do this for the next couple problems, but what we see here is that because blue acts on the state one, we take this first arrow and let the operator act on it, leaving the second arrow untouched, similarly here. And then what we see here is that red acts on the second state, so we look at the second arrow, as we see here in the curly brackets. Again, 
this is very cumbersome and can be very annoying, but this is how we're dealing with it in this text. All right, that being said, in the algebraic development of spin, we mimicked a lot of things from the orbital angular momentum and we got to the operators being matrices. So the lowering matrix looks like this. And we saw that when we first started talking about spin, there was a spin up and a spin down uh, chi vector. And we denoted that as spin up with one zero and spin down with zero one. So when we look at it in this view, we see it, it's nothing but matrix mechanics. And then this will make sense why uh, we get factors of h bar or h bar over two everywhere. And then we'll start seeing some of our old friends come up again. So this is for all of the uh, lower end operators acting on uh, the first state. So color coded in blue, of course. Let's see how this compiles with the second state. So here we have the same operator, just again acting on a different state. So the ordering does matter here because one was up down, the other was down up. So we see that we get the yin yang of mix matching. That being said, both of them kind of yield similar results. For the first state or the blue operators, we saw that we had the zero zero multiplying by one zero and then one zero multiplying by zero one. And so we get this kind of thing going on here. That's just a matrix multiplication. And then what we see is that after we do the matrix multiplication for all the uh, lower end operators acting on their states, we get these vector types again. Um, and again, these are just piquette vectors. So we note that this turns into a uh, spin down form. So we put a down arrow. This is a big fat zero. So we get a zero and here another zero. So zero. And this looks like a spin down form. So we put a down arrow. And physically, that should kind of make sense. If we recall from the harmonic oscillator and the other algebraic theories, this we can't lower something that's already in the lowest state. So trying to lower a down arrow just leads you to a zero vector. And that should make sense. Now, of course, this is kind of hand wavy. Nothing's, you know, this is just trying to make sense of what's going on. This isn't as mathematically rigorous as it could be but it still gives us the fact that we can't lower the lowest and we can't raise the highest. So we're going back to that from what, chapter two? That'll be evident again in a couple uh, seconds as we get further into this. That being said, zero, zero, they go bye-bye, so we don't care about them. Now that being said, since we operated on the appropriate state, we recombine these to one ket. So you see that after uh, the blue lowering operated on the, uh, up state, we get two down states in their conjoined form. Similarly here, down, down to down. You see both of them have a H bar, so we can go ahead and uh, factor that out. But we also have two of them. So then we end up with a two root, two over root two, which by rationalizing, we get the square root of two here. So we're able to find that this is our form here. Now, what do these down arrows represent? Well, in this triplet state as highlighted in the question, uh, and I rewrote this in a PDF, we see that this correlates to the state of one negative one. Again, that should make sense because we started out in the state of one zero, I believe. So um, when we lower it, then we go down one. So that makes sense why this is negative one. So we're good to go there. But we can verify this. So we plug into the Eigen equation that we discovered by mimicking the orbital angular momentum. And we see that for S and M, if we plug in their respective states and color coded, of course, we into this formula, which we derived, at least for the angular momentum part of it, the orbital angular momentum. I don't remember if we did the spin, but follows the same form. We see that this Eigen equation yields the same result. So we are good to go. How cool is that? This brings us to our next stop. In part B, we were asked to apply the raising and lowering to this specific state of zero, zero. In this context, since S, the total S is zero, we can only have one possible combination via the way that the quantum numbers work for M to conjoin. So what we say is that this is a singlet state. There's only one of them. That's the only one that could possibly exist in the addition of two spins. But because we add in halves in the spin, uh, series maybe not series but in the spin states 
we can have a lot more just by going up to s equals one. In fact, that's how we got three states, the triplet states. So you could imagine how gross these can get as we keep going up in different types of spin. All right, so that being said, if we want to apply the raising and the lowering to this specific state, what we see is that we have to make the notation back to like we did in part A. So raising and lowering on this state, we see that we're adding two, so this acts on state one, this acts on state two. But be mindful, because we have two different states that we're adding together, I can have one, I can have multiple ways to get zero out of the MS um, values. I could add a plus one half and a minus one half, or a minus one half and a plus one half. Both of them are indicated with a total S of zero. So this is how we end up with this normalized form here with the minus sign instead of a plus sign. Be aware that these things become increasingly annoying to keep track of. It might just be best to keep a sticky note or cheat sheet with you as you go through these. That being said, we still have to distribute like we did last time. And we see that when we do so, we get blue on the first state, blue on the first state, minus sign from this, adding both states together. And then we have the red acting on the second state as it should be. Of course, we can't evaluate these all at once. We have to split them up in a, the upper sign and the lower sign. So starting with the upper sign, we want to find the raising operator on the state. Of course, like we talked on in part A, if we're raising this thing, we can't raise an already up arrow. So that goes to zero, easy enough. And then we can uh, raise a lower arrow, but it comes with the factor of H bar. Okay, so we're starting to see a theme here yet again. Similarly, raising an up arrow, we get an H bar. Raising an up arrow or raising a down arrow, we get H bar. Raising an up arrow, we get zero. I think that's pretty easy to see now that we got a, uh, a head on us. And so instead of, uh, you know, I, in the PDF, I kept all the matrices just so we can stay, um, you know, pretty well balanced on it. But for the video, I think we can see the arguments a little clearer this way. So let's go ahead and simplify this and see what we get. All right. So clearly with that negative sign coming from the singlet state, we get a resulting negative here from the raising operator on the first state and a positive from the raising operator on the second state, both of those cancel out accordingly and we get a big fat zero in the bracket. So again, for a singlet state, we can't raise it to another state. Algebraically, this holds true. There is no other state to go to, so we get zero. That makes a lot of sense and we're glad to see that. Now, similarly, for the lowering, we can kind of expedite the process now that we've seen it before. And we apply the lowering to the first state, first state, second state, second state. Again, I can't uh, lower a down arrow, so I get zero here and here. Cool. I can lower an up arrow, so I can do that at the cost of H bar, as we see in purple. Easy enough. And then, of course, that negative sign from the singlet state makes sure that these things cancel in the recombined form. Big fat zero. Again, makes sense. We can't go to another state if we're just a singlet state. So all of these are great mental checks. And when we talk about arguments in the quantum mechanics, especially spins, which other books dive into whole chapters on, this becomes increasingly annoying. So seeing these things kind of written out and taken more term by term is definitely a clear advantage when we're trying to follow the author's logic. And we just have never seen them written out like this before. So that being said, we reach our second checkpoint where we cover the lowering on a triplet state and we cover both the raising and lowering on a singlet state. That then leads us to our stop number three, which is part C, applying the S squared to a 1-1 state. The 1-1 state, of course, occurs in a triplet state because S equals one. We have three values for the total M, which is just going to be one, zero, negative one. So we have to be careful what we're trying to do here. That being said, we have S squared, and because we're adding, if we plug in the S on S squared, excuse me, if we add in the S on state one and state two, and we square that, we get a distribution that we have to do. And this is where we see that this bracket is the operator bracket itself. Of course, we've seen binomial, uh, you know, factoring and foiling before, 
so this is nothing new. Just be aware that this turns into a 2 from the cross terms that we see, and we're not just squared on both of those. So be aware, operators do tend to be messy with this, and this dot product just indicates that we're multiplying two matrices. They're not scalar. That being said, the 1-1 one, one state was highlighted as up-up instead of the 1-0 state, which was a mixture of two. So we have a nice little up-up to operate on, and let's see how we can clean this up. Awesome. So we have to distribute, of course, to the states and their operators. But that um, state one operator and the state two operator, they were still matrices. So each one of them was composed of x, x, y, y, z, z, and the dot product pulls them together. But we remember that these were the spin matrices, and we saw that they indeed invoked the poly spin matrices that we saw a couple questions ago. So all this stuff is coming back together, and we see yet again the importance of the poly matrices. Um, that being said, when we start to dive into these operators and getting them operating on the right things, we see that S1 operates on state 1. Up 1 here, leave the second one alone. S2 operates on second state, so we take the square operating on the second state, leave the first alone. Since the uh, dot product of these two uh, vectors of matrices, however you want to deem it, they're really tensor products, um, in diagonal form but we'll save that rant for later here we see that we are operating on the states together and it's a beautiful distribution evenly put that being said the other nice part about the poly matrices that we showcased in a couple questions i'll just uh reference it in the timestamps. Uh, but we showed that the square of the poly matrices regardless of which one it was led to an identity matrix so we see here that for the square matrices, all we had was a three-fourths h bar squared and the identity acting on the state vector. That's not too bad to handle. So we get the identity here and here for both state acting on what it is, so we just return our states. That's pretty cool. Of course, it being an eigen equation, we know that we just get some kind of multiple, which is the eigenvalue. Moving on to these uh, specific spin matrices, we have to plug in the poly equivalents and simplify, so it gets a little messy. So in the first line, we have just the x matrices, again with the h bar over 2. Second line, we have the y, so sigma y, sigma x, sigma z, so on. And again, since we're acting on up arrows, we have a 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 for all of them. This should be pretty quick and easy. We'll just have to duplicate the results, but be aware, simplifying it can be a little cumbersome, so just be very tidy with it. So here we see that the identity multiplying the up state gives us back the same thing. So that's for uh, the blue S squared and the red S squared, easy enough. Now these, when we multiply down this row to this column, we get a zero. This row to this column, we get a one. Easy enough matrix multiplication. And then we duplicate that since it's the same operator on the same state, just in a different color. All right, moving on to this, we get an I here. So we get a arrow, which I'll show you in a second. But we note that uh, the I can be factored out, and that's what we'll have to do. And then we get a 0, 1, so that looks like a down arrow. Here we get that Z doesn't do anything to it. It just leaves it in the same state. So that should tell you a little bit about the orientation of this spin. Um, that being said... Let's go ahead and now put the arrows where they need to be so that we can recombine and simplify. So, or excuse me, so what we see here is that uh, with the three over four, we can write that as uh, two squared, which we'll see cancels in a second. But we see that we combine up up arrows for these uh, blue square, up up for the red square. And now for both of these uh, in the, uh, x, y, and z matrix operators, we get a down down for the x components. After we factored out the i squared, then we showed that that looked like the uh, uh, lower, or excuse me, the spin down uh, vector. So we put down down and we have an up up. Okay. This is where if you're not careful, these i's and negative ones that we see in the poly matrices will start to catch you off guard. And you're going to be really upset if you miss something due to a minus sign. It happens to the best of us. Don't sweat it too much, just be aware of it. So that being said, we have two of these states, so we can combine them. But that two cancels with a factor here. Good to go. 
notice that we have in this case two and every term in this uh, parentheses has h bar squared over uh, four which we rewrote as two to the two so we factor that out and cancel the two out front that being said i squared goes to negative one so the two down state uh duplets cancel out that's easy enough and we're left with an up up not too bad but be aware the cancellations do come in and we have to be aware of them that being said we have a three halves h bar squared with the up up and a one half h bar squared with an up up combine them you get four halves which leads us to two h bar squared um and that gives us the state representation that we started with which was state one one that being said we can verify this with the eigen equation as we see here just plug in the values in their appropriate spots and we do indeed verify exactly what we needed to do now let's rerun this but with a different state So if we apply this to the opposite state where we have negative one, notice that in this question we covered the one zero in the triplet, we covered the one one, and now we're covering the one negative one with all different types of operators. So just rinse and repeat, write it out, distribute uh, accordingly and safely, make sure you have the same um, states acting on the appropriate operators, or rather the appropriate operators acting on the appropriate state and the notation that we have and we see we just kind of rinse and repeat with this being the identity we just get a spin down spin down and then here we saw what happened with uh, sx on spin down or spin up so we can just multiply again here we get from a down we get to an up here on the y's we get from a down to a hidden up because we have to fact those negative i's out similarly here on the z's we were spin down going into it and now we remain spin down but we have a negative sign here that we will also have to factor out so if we change from uh, matrix uh, notation to arrow notation we put the spin down spin down from the squares easy enough and then for the x's we see that this is straight straightforward with us up up both with the h bar over two and oops and then we can see that when we factor out the negative i, then we have the spin up arrow. When we factor out the negative one, we get the spin down arrow as we kind of prelude it to. And so what we see then is that we had two, once again, of the down downs from the squares. No surprise, cancel, cancel. Here again, we get negative i squared, so that gives us a positive i squared, um, which then gives us negative one again. So this goes to a negative up, up state. The x values just led to a positive up up state so conveniently they cancel um, and we're left with a down down state thanks to the z component again the negative one and negative one multiply together to cancel the negative sign so we're good there also note again we have these h bars floating in space because they're everywhere i'm not sure how Planck came up with this but it'd be an interesting research project uh, but nonetheless we see that we get again just a combination add them together we get four over two h bar squared down down and then we recompile that good to go check with the eigen equation and we are indeed good to go how cool is that we get to verify the algebraic uh the algebraic results from the orbital angular momentum in the specific context of spin while also dealing in the mysterious ways of the coupled basis and the arrow notation again very very messy and when we see what happens when we add other types of particles we uh, will cover the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients in the next video, so that's why I'm giving you a little lead on it. Those are going to make or break a lot of your research results later. Maybe not research, but definitely a lot of your study results later because that table is gruesome to deal with. A lot of people have headaches about it, but nonetheless, it is important to us. And I uh, appreciate those who decided to make the table, and we'll see that in the next video. So, in summary, we covered how to use the lowering operator on one of the triplet states, the lowering and raising operator on a singlet state, and of course, the S squared operator, again, in the addition sense, on two of, of rather, on the other two states of the triplet state, so plus or minus, not at the same time. Again, a little messy, but plenty of reason to cover it because we will see it again at some point. 
A massive thank you to our patrons for their invaluable support, making all of this possible. Please consider subscribing and sharing to fuel this curiosity or even become a patron yourself. New content is posted weekly to aid you in your curious pursuits. Books, notes, and other reference materials are found below. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. This stuff is not always easy, and it is a lot of fun. Sometimes my way of explaining it isn't the best. Sometimes the author's way isn't the best. But somewhere together, we can find a way to help everybody understand at some level. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, stay curious.